Two of the leading New York prosecutors investigating Donald Trump have resigned. It was a shocking resignation. We don't have too many details as to why these prosecutors decided to step down from their roles. And yes, this is highly unusual. Now, this is in regard to the criminal investigation into Donald Trump, specifically the investigation looking into potential financial fraud. The allegations were that Donald Trump inflated his assets in order to obtain insurance and loans. And then he also deflated his assets later to dodge taxes on the money that he made. Now the prosecutors who resigned, Kerry Dune and Mark Pomerantz, submitted their resignations after the new Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg indicated to them that he had doubts about moving forward with a case against Trump. Without Bragg's commitment to move forward, the prosecutors or yeah, the prosecutors late last month postponed a plan to question at least one witness before the grand jury. They have not questioned any witnesses in front of the grand jury for more than a month, essentially pausing their investigation into whether Trump inflated the value of his assets to obtain favorable loan terms from banks. Now, one of the people who had testified under oath in regard to Trump committing financial fraud was his own former personal attorney, Michael Cohen. And that is what sparked various investigations into Trump. Now, the one that we're talking about here is the criminal investigation. And since it's a criminal investigation, it has a higher burden of proof, no doubt. But my read of this so far is that the new, uh, you know, the new district attorney, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, is pretty quick to give up, and I'm not really understanding why here. So let me explain. So uh, there are a few issues, right, uh, it, when it comes to doing this investigation and and meeting that burden of proof uh, to convict him uh, criminally of financial fraud. Now uh, you'd have to. Testify, have some of Trump's lenders testify, but there are issues with that. For instance, Trump's lenders might also not make for sympathetic victims with a jury. The lenders, which made millions of dollars in interest from Trump, conducted their own assessments of his assets. So uh, did the lenders actually do their own assessments of, the, of his assets? Uh, was there some incompetent? Uh, in, regard to what the lenders did in processing his applications for loans or for insurance. Prosecutors have thus far been unable to also convince Trump's long serving chief financial officer to cooperate with the investigation, depriving them of the type of insider witness whose testimony can be crucial to complicated white collar criminal cases. Oh Wow, so it's really hard to, you know, like make a case against someone who might have committed some pretty serious financial fraud. So why don't you just give up? Like, what? <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. Why not continue pursuing it? It just seems like as soon as we have this new Manhattan District Attorney, who apparently is afraid of a little bit of a challenge here, all of a sudden you now have prosecutors resigning, and it's now completely unclear whether or not they're going to move forward with this criminal investigation. And I think they should move forward with it because I think that there is already, you know, a lot in the public record indicating that Trump has a history of committing financial fraud. But no, it, I mean, it seems like they're just throwing their hands in the air now and saying, like, I don't know, it's really hard. We can't get this guy to you know, cooperate with us. We're having a difficult time actually doing the legwork necessary to, to meet a burden of proof that's high, and it's a high burden of proof for good reason. Um, but this is separate from the you know, civil investigation into the matter. Because there are two different investigations into financial fraud. One is criminal, one is civil. Now, they had already, by the way, spoken to a longtime Trump accountant. The pause coincides with an escalation in the activity of a parallel civil inquiry by the New York State Attorney General, Letitia James, whose office is ex examining some of the same conduct by Trump. Now that investigation is still moving forward. It is a civil investigation. Seems like she's been able to get 
important witnesses to testify, including Trump's longtime accountant. Uh, so again, I'm unclear as to what's really going on with this criminal investigation. Uh, these reports are preliminary. The prosecutors who have stepped down have been completely unclear as to why they've decided to step down. They're not giving any comment or elaboration to the press. Um, and I also wanna note that Letitia James recently got approval from a judge to have both Trump and his two adult children testify under oath. So if the criminal investigation is not moving forward because prosecutors are having a hard time getting one accountant to cooperate with them. I think that's a, I think it's pretty weak to, to cite that as the reason to drop it if they do drop the criminal investigation soon. I mean, Letitia James is fighting to ensure that she can get people to testify under oath, including Donald Trump and his kids. So what's going on with this criminal investigation? Why can't they also fight to make that happen? Again, a lot of this is unclear. Maybe we'll get some more information in the coming days in regard to what's really going on here. But I'm really not buying that, Oh well, you know, this is just too tough. The, there's a high burden of proof and so we're just gonna drop it. Why? You gotta give a better reason. Um, there are other criminal investigations into Donald Trump as well. We'll see where they go. In recent weeks, for instance, a district attorney in Atlanta asked a judge to convene a grand jury for an investigation into Trump's attempts to overturn the results of the 2020 election in Georgia. Another, another criminal investigation in New York's Westchester County is examining Trump's financial dealings at one of his company's golf courses. Lot of investigations, and my question is, when it comes to these criminal investigations, is the intention to actually investigate Trump and carry out justice if he is found guilty of committing financial fraud? Or is this just posturing to make it appear as though these prosecutors are being tough on a guy who clearly has a questionable financial history? Right, because I do see a lot of theater happening in Congress. It'd be a shame if we saw a lot of theater happening with these prosecutors, especially when it comes to serious allegations of financial fraud. The same financial fraud that would throw us in prison immediately, by the way. You think if we were suspected of intentionally deflating our assets to dodge taxes, prosecutors would be like, you know, the burden of proof, it's just too high, so we're just gonna drop it. No, they wouldn't do that. So I really wanna understand what Bragg's intentions are here. What's really going on? Cuz I'm not buying this story as it stands right now. I think there's gonna be more information coming out in the coming days that can kind of clarify what's happening with this criminal investigation. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.